Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Local Chat, episode 168. I'm your host, Will Crosby, and joining me this week is a man who probably can't talk about one of his stories because he signed an NDA. It's Chris from Save Data. I fucked Frankenstein twice, now I got two nuts on my neck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, speaking of Mary Shelley, prolific author Jake Terrio joins <laughs> us here. How um, many episodes do we need to do before we can be syndicated? Um, I'll call up Jerry Is Seinfeld and ask him. Um, I think yeah, so. Have, you, you have to have at least two seasons also. This is just one really long season. Yeah, we're, uh, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure if you cross a full year of doing it weekly, it becomes a season. I guess actually, after episode 100, we rebranded, so that could be season two. Yeah, there you go. It's true, right. folks. Season two, welcome. Hi, Halucha in the chat. Uh, folks, we are here to talk about um, things, life, video games, Japanese curry, um, fantastic science fiction books, um, snuggling with goats. Uh, all sorts of wonderful things. Before we get started, uh, Chris probably has some bullshit. I wrote that down. Uh, I have options. He's got plenty of options. These are, for folks who don't know, uh, Ian and I have discovered these are just would you rathers with They're some paint on them. Would you rathers? <laughs> Um, so, I'm just glad uh, I finally get to be here for one in person. <laughs> yeah, you're very lucky. Um, anyways, uh, Chris, take it away. All right, this one's called the car wash. Imagine yes. you work at a car wash. You do not manually wash the cars. You're more there in case of uh, anything goes wrong, maintenance, supervised, whatever. Um, you're the only person, you're the only employee there at the time. How many times in a row can a car go through the car wash before you call the police? Uh, the, the car has blacked out tinted windows. If you knock or anything, no response. If you try to get in front of the car or try to close up the car wash, they honk and lay on the horn and rev their engine repeatedly at you. I, I'm, I don't know. I, any amount of times? Are they still, are they paying every time that they go through? Yeah, yeah, but you can't then, leave yeah. until, they're, until they're done. Just let it run. Yeah. I don't care. I'm not. I, if I'm working at the car wash, I'm certainly not getting paid enough to deal with it. Yeah. That, so that was going to be my answer. Uh, sorry, I had to grab a list. I realized I had things written down uh, that I wanted to talk about, but um, and I spilled BNC cable connectors all over the floor. But I agree that uh, I would just let it go. Like, I'm still getting paid, right? Yeah, if they're trying to wash off, you know, the evidence of some murder or something, that's not my problem. Well, what, what if, what, what happens when they're preventing you from going home? Oh, you're saying they're doing it like after oh. hours. Oh, they, they will, as long as you are, don't call the police, they're not stopping. Oh, then like 15 minutes after the place is supposed, if I, after I'm supposed to punch out, that, that's when. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then, I mean, because it has to leave the building to come back around. So I yes. would have closed the door at that point. But but I feel like in the time it takes you to go out and like try to bring the gate down, they're whipping around the corner and trying Jeez. to get back in. Okay, okay. These, this changed the thing. Um, yeah, I think I would call the cops. Or at least call my boss or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. This is like one of those uh, anthology horror games. Can't remember what, what yeah, company yeah. makes them. It's, um, so this it's is like the, the car duel, wash with a car wash. Yeah, <laughs> Steven Spielberg's duel in a car yeah, wash with a car wash. God, I um, should re. That movie's great. Just because Jake is here and hasn't been all asked the best two real thinkers, we have to. Um, okay. All right, Jake. This is this is the this is the ultimate thinker. This is okay. called the ghost. Okay. Would you rather? <laughs> would you rather have a ghost that only you can see and hear? that watches you every time you have sex or every time you poop. Either way, the ghost is very into it in a clearly sexual manner, and they make it very obvious to you that they're into it. I would prefer the latter. The poop. Yes. There's a ladder? Correct. Correct. Good man. <laughs> Anyone that... Any, uh, oh, so, no. You're insane. Sorry. You're, you're, you're mad. You <laughs> no. Damn mine. <laughs> No, because no. I can be I can be on my phone not paying attention. Okay, I want you to imagine this. I want this. to be a hundred percent involved in the other thing. I want to be focused. I want to be deliberate. I want you to imagine this. You're you you've had a long day at the office. Mm -hmm. You go to take a poop. Ghost. You go home. You go to take a poop. 
ghost. You're mm-hmm. out at a fucking public event. You got to go to a tiny ass, sweaty, stinky little porta potty. Ghost masturbating in front of you. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, the ghost is masturbating. Well, they're into it in a sexual that way. That was the oh. implication. Yes. Yeah. No, is it a female always... or a male ghost? Unclear. It's like a. Uh, it's like a bed. <laughs> it's like a bed sheet ghost. Is there a jaculi? No. That, ectoplasm. ectoplasm. <laughs> I couldn't nice. think of the word. <laughs> no, my my answer. I re- it remains the same. Here's here's my logic: is that sex is already sexual by nature. So, in the grand scheme of things, I don't care if someone's getting off to it. Pooping is between me and God. And often I'm fighting for my life in there, and I don't need that. My answer remains the same. All right. Will, what's your answer? <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm laughing at Lucha calling me out for not enforcing the, bi- for enforcing the binary. <laughs> as as <laughs> if it's male or female. I was yeah. like, what? I was like, good point. You know, I just wanted to know. Actually, Halucha, can I be completely transparent? I wanted to know what was underneath there, if I could catch a peek of it. And I wanted to know which one I was bracing for. So mm. if there's not, if it's a G.I. Joe, that's fine. No peaks. Um, no, it's not, I think it's, it's, it'll be forever unclear. I think the last time I was on here, I said the sex thing. Um, yeah, that's so weird. Then you, then you just got a buddy when you're when you're that, asking. That's no different than having a cock. <laughs> and Jake, you already <laughs> just kidding. All right, you're <laughs> revealing so many secrets. <laughs> this, so many Jake, secrets. Jake, He's right this behind called, you. <laughs> this, uh, this. He's in the couch. <laughs> That's part of it for him. Um, the Jake, this other one's called the punch. What is the largest animal by mass you could kill with a single punch? Oh, I remember this. Uh, uh, Animal will stand still, won't defend itself like a turtle, won't go inside of its shell. Uh, you can't do anything outside. You can't, like, you know, get brass knuckles or, like, stick your fist out of a car and be like, that counts. Sure. Um, you can't take, like, roids or anything, such as smelling salts. Uh, you do, however, get one glass of alcohol of your choice and one cigarette to smoke. And you also get 10 minutes to prep, stretch, research the animal what? anatomy, and select music. I don't know. I mean, if we're being completely honest, I would be hesitant to say anything larger than like a chicken so uh, in general you're correct people way overestimate what they could kill with this thing uh i do think there are examples i will i don't know if it was used somebody said like an ostrich if you like punch it in the neck and then it's lung yeah. collapse or like neck collapses like th- there's something there yeah i mean if i'm being like really uh if i have a t- completely objective stance on my own abilities i'd say like a mouse okay I if feel it's like, just one, just I feel like one? there there's shit that's bigger, that's weaker naturally. Because even a mouse, like you know, they can survive all kinds of fucking shit. <laughs> what? Uh, what's the battlefield? Whatever the natural environment that animal would be in. So I, I because I had a coworker yeah. that said I, that I had a coworker that said I could kill a shark in a single punch because the you punch in the yeah. nose and then it dies. No. And I was like, you in the water, you're not gonna be able to get your fist fast what? enough to fist that shark good. I was gonna say a blue whale and just shove my hand into its blowhole, uh, and then uh, that's drown I, it. Uh, yeah, honestly, that's probably what I would go with. Um, uh, I, I, a guy I went to a college with who's very southern said he could kill a horse in a single punch and when I was like how he goes I know and I was I like know. <laughs> whatever you say shopper <laughs> I'll kill it yeah no I, I would uh, I think many people would overestimate their ability in that regard so I would pick a very small creature um, Chris is that all uh, that all you brought to the class uh, I came in first at the fisting competition. I got five thumbs up. What? Jesus. Um, I was just going to say... Oh, I just got it. Um, I wrote this down a while ago. It doesn't stand I... up to much critical scrutiny. <laughs> but You haven't seen the competitions I go to. <laughs> um, I wrote this down a while ago, and I don't know how to breach it. Um, but I thought it was broach really it. funny. Broach or it. broach it. Listen, I'll do it. Or anything. breach it. What do you want? <laughs> Um, like a drop pod into Achilles, am I right? Um, <laughs> Martin, uh, it's crazy that there's two really famous people named Martin Luther. What are the chances Who's of that? Who's the second? Well, there's Martin Luther King Jr., and then there's Martin Luther. That's not the same name. I mean, he's That's got a different two of the name. same name. He's got two of the names I mean, he's, in named, him. he's named after him. I'll give it to him. No, he's not named. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, I never knew when to use that joke. It's not very good, but I like the implication of someone not knowing Martin Luther was famous and that Martin Luther King was named after him. <laughs> but that two people are named Martin Luther. Listen, uh, my Lutherans in chat are dying right now. They're loving that joke. <laughs> loving it. What other Protestant reformers can you name? Um, there's Paul incorrect <laughs> the, the history of the church that's way further back <laughs> oh mary you know they're just hanging sure. <laughs> greg um great i'm glad chris could subject jake to some bullshit and thank you for you have to. um i realized the other thing i wrote down was the honk if you love jesus thing but it's not around oh we can do we the test on chris week. chris do you know the <laughs> George did no? this to me. Chris, Hit when me you see it. a bumper oh, sticker okay. that says like, honk if you love Jesus, honk if you love pizza, what does that mean? Uh, it means this person is a bad driver, so they're putting the Damn sticker it. on there. So when you get honked at, you're reinforcing their beliefs, which kind of like, you, yeah. you shouldn't honk at them because then they're winning. Yeah, you're right. Did you not know that? No, I thought it just meant you like pizza honk. It's rude. George did that to me, and I answered that, and he goes, he goes, yeah, that's an autism test. You're autistic. And I went, what? I was like, well, you're I, acoustic. I just, first thing he said to me, yeah, I'm acoustic. Um, so, um, what? <laughs> Anyways, we're moving on. Folks, uh, it's time to talk about the video games we've been playing this week. I'll go first, because I haven't played much, but I did beat the Splinter Cell, uh, 2002's Xbox exclusive Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell featuring Michael Ironside and others. Um, fantastic video game. It really, uh, really ramps up at the end there. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's, I, I, I keep capturing video of it when I was playing it and I really want to make some sort of video about it. And I was talking to Kyle about this last week. But there's some sort of like it was like on the cusp or on the cutting edge of the technology that was available at the time before it all went to like pre-rendered cutscenes and everything because there's some fantastic cutscenes and model work that like they understood what their limitations were and they didn't try to go past them and also the lighting in that game is just like a chef's kiss um mm -hmm. But there's like this one spot where there was a spider web blowing in the wind and there was a butterfly in front of one of the lights and like the shadow of the butterfly was going down. And I was like, this game came out in 2002 on the Xbox and it looks like this. That's kind of crazy. Um, still plays really well. Uh, I finished it up. Crazy storyline. Uh, and then, of course, at the very end, he gets the call back, which is great. Uh, great way to end a video game. Uh, and now I have moved on to Pandora Tomorrow, which is a huge upgrade. Mm -hmm. I can shoot while hanging. I can shoot while, like, uh, I can hang upside down and shoot. I don't have to, like, jump off of things to grab ledges in, like, a weird, like, I don't know, like, platforming game. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited to play more of Pandora Tomorrow. And then I know Chaos Theory is, like, the big one that everyone loves. I was going to uh, say, you're going you're gonna to bust your nut when you get there. I, I think I played a little bit of it before, um, but I really don't remember it at all. Pandora Tomorrow, I was reading on the wiki, is like the the like odd one out, because it's like a bioterrorism story. It really mm -hmm. doesn't have to deal with the... I only vaguely um, remember uh, Pandora Tomorrow. When yeah, it's Jack not like a Ryan world... show up? What'd you say? When does Jack Ryan show up? After The Office ends. <laughs> yeah, after The Office ends. Um, oh, the Allstate guy is in the second one. They replaced Lambert's voice with the Allstate guy. Um, oh, you're in good hands. Yeah, I'm in great hands. And then they changed him back in the next game. So I was like, what? was he asking too much? Did he become the Allstate guy? And that's why. Um, but uh, he's really great. Um, so yeah, that's Splinter Cell. I'm 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 just gonna keep playing more of them because they're fun. Uh, I will be streaming some of the so that you can't get the extra bonus missions on Xbox anymore. When you hit download uh, extra missions, it just says the Xbox servers no longer are online. Right. So uh, I I happen to own it on PC, which I didn't realize. So I installed it on PC, and then 
you can just drag those missions and sound bites into the folder and I loaded it up and it worked fine and it looks if it looked good on the Xbox Series X it looks fantastic on a PC um, it's just like 4k textures and everything um, like I said it's good and and uh, this will probably be in whatever video I do it they're like news scenes and everything are all animated um, it was pre like motion capture and all that and I, I remember as a kid thinking they were actual news like reports uh, or like shots so I'm surprised that it was a uh, kind of that realistic uh, if you if you will so Tom Clancy very prolific uh, writer had nothing to do with Splinter Cell so uh, uh, than, uh, than uh, hi, uh, m most valuable dead author most valuable dead author dig him up folks he's worth a lot Bring them down to the pawn shop. That's, well, uh, I, I would maybe argue that at in the, at this stage, Tolkien's got a little bit more heft. Uh, sorry, but, uh, I, I, I his estate is worth more than Tolkien's estate, and oh, yes, and sure. yes, that stat is fucking wild. Yeah, <laughs> more than Asimov, like just like Tom Clancy, just some old racist. I mean, he really did brand himself out fairly quickly yeah yeah um, hey he he was willing to sell himself for a dollar right? we've got <laughs> one of the more ancient subpixel videos is ian uh talking about which tom clancy books he'd like to see adapted into video games it's mm. pretty good i edited it oh man so it has to be good it has um, to be good <laughs> and I, I, I better guess it so it has to be old I didn't mention this last week, but uh, I forgot every time it starts and it's like the ad campaign for the game, which is that Sam Fisher, he's part of Echelon, which is part of the NSA, which at the time, mm -hmm. the NSA didn't spy on you. Pre Snowden. Um, pre Snowden. But also, uh, he, he, he like, there's the mantra of like the fifth freedom, which is it's like the robot laws, which is to protect all other freedom, American freedoms you can do whatever is necessary, which is just the like license to kill I like free Sam speech Fisher. to protect free speech. Yeah. So it's so funny. I was like digging up marketing material for it. And it's just like this guy, I am the fifth freedom. And it fifth freedom just sounds like a militia group that is yes. like pro Trump alt right. Uh, alt Force alt. your neighbors to house uh, <laughs> military personnel. Yeah. And they have like a complex in Minnesota or something uh where they they, they, fly, they fly that the black no quarter flag in the front yard kind of <laughs> and shit. sovereign citizen plates oh, okay, <laughs> sovereign citizen plates, damn it. Where's, wait where's where's cheyenne mountain is that it montana well, no that's wyoming right it's somewhere else. it's in one of the squares <laughs> it's one of the squares one of the squares? in the midwest i think no somewhere the squares there. are further <laughs> west i know um yeah, so that's Splinter Cell, um, wild game. I did also start playing the Game Boy version of it, Game Boy Advance version of it, uh, which is honestly not that bad. It uh, mm. it plays pretty well, so I'll report back on that next time. Uh, the other game I played a little bit of is Karen and I got back into Cuphead uh, because we really wanted something to play, and we beat the first like four or five bosses. We were kind of doing like it's got one a couch co op, right? Yeah, yeah, it's got like, and it's like any time drop in drop out co-op which is amazing um and you get your own like separate pools of money and so you can buy what stuff you want and it's they're just the other character and then if they're not there you just play by yourself so we were doing that and then there's these um famously cuphead was delayed because they added all those platforming levels and because it was just going to be a boss rush and funny and f funny in my opinion those levels are the worst part of cuphead um, but it's where you get all the coins for upgrades and those levels are absolutely not built for two players Like all the timing mm. is set for one player, but we still did them all in co-op uh, Or not all of them We've done the ones so far in co-op and get all those magical coins so we can play more Cuphead But yeah, Cuphead's good and it, it's hard to not just stare at the art all the time. Yeah um, Because it's absolutely gorgeous, but uh, Yeah, we we, uh, we played a little bit of that we beat uh, one boss the other day and then went to the second boss lost once and we're like yeah let's play something else for a bit so uh moved on from that um moving on from me as well uh chris topher please tell me how is the dogma of the dragons as they call it dragon my nuts on your ma dog two of my not nuts on your dragon dog ma um Excuse me? it's 
<laughs> that, there's a tweet that's just like every single word and they work their way to saying nuts. <laughs> it's, it's like dragging my nuts on your ma, dog, two of my nuts are on your mom. <laughs> ma, two of my nuts, dog, or something like that. Like they just ran out. Um, dog, ma, uh, two of my nuts. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, so I had said for a while that Dragon's Dogma 1 was most wounded by the fact that it came out when before Souls was super popular and before it could steal things from Monster Hunter World. Um, and now both of those things have happened, and guess what? Dragon's Dogma 2 fucking rules, because they <laughs> stole things from Dark Souls, or from Miyazaki Souls games in general, and from uh, Monster Hunter World. Uh, it's just good. The game's oh, just good. Oh, sorry. Jake's raising his hand. Uh, he, he has, uh, I, I yeah, assume, sorry. a question. Will and Ian talked about this and made no mention of comparisons to Monster Hunter World, which has me instantly a lot more interested in it, so please <laughs> oh, elaborate. It is so, like very monster <laughs> so Do dragon's dogma one had a lot of like climbing on monsters like for example like you could climb on an orc and stab it with your your, your knives in the butt um but i would say a, like that was more of like a cool thing to do whereas in this version in dogma 2 there's a lot more of that is it is intentional design and you can do cool shit and mm -hmm. there are cool um like not like cutscenes, but like like pre-planned moments that happen when you do cool shit like, you know, cut the thing's tail off or fucking knock the griffin out of the air and shit like that. Uh, and it's very satisfying. Um, okay. I would I argue saw, one uh, had one had I, it's the same amount as one. Because even in more. one, I, OK, because like uh, you can right take the out amount, the goat head better. and cut off. Yeah. Oh, obviously it's leaps and bounds better. But one had yeah. like the climb on, kill the goat because it's cast casting magic, cut off yeah, the snake yeah. tail because it's biting you. Um, but yes, I will say Dragon's Dogma 2 does it much better, especially. Yeah. Uh, there's like some shadows of shadow of Colossus moments in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which play pretty well. The game does very well with scale. Like making the world feel fucking big, which mm -hmm. I always really like, and like also making like when you see a troll, you're like, "It's a big motherfucker, ain't it?" Um, and shit like that. Um, what was the other thing I was about to say? Oh yeah, uh, there was a tweet that got a lot of hate going around. It's from a game fly or fucking I don't know, someone some, some random fucking Dextero or some shit <laughs> that was like, "Dragon's Dogma is what I've always wanted out of a Souls game because it's actually fucking easy combat and I'm having fun." Um, which is accurate. Like, like there's very rare that like a fight that I'm not like, you know, under level four where I'm like, oh, this is like I'm having a really tough time. I'm just having fun doing cool combos and shooting things with a bow and arrow and having a grand old time. And like, that's fine. I don't yeah. need to. I don't, I don't always need to have a challenge in a video game. I can feel like God for a while and that's OK. Um, also, big shout out to any game that lets you play an archer where you don't have to uh, manually aim and every individual shot because that's a pain in the, in the butt dick. Yeah, I do like that. They let you, though, if you want to. Yes, yeah, um, that, that's how it, that's how it fucking should be. A button to fire quick arrows that just hit the target. And then if I want to aim and get a headshot or whatever, I'm, I'm permitted to. Yeah, I, I would say, <laughs> I mean, it depends. Uh, difficulty. Yes, it's way less difficult than Elden Ring and soft from soft games. But also, I think if 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 you're under leveled, it's a, it's a lot tougher time, so you can kind of manage yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice. Which in in a Souls you'll game, you'll die. You'll die pretty quick if you're under leveled. Yeah, in a Souls game pre Elden Ring was hard to do. Elden Ring was kind of like, oh, I can't do the thing here. I'll just go do something else. I'll for just a while. fuck off. Yeah. Uh, which was nice. Um, and they definitely got the caves. All these caves from Elden yeah. Ring. They're like, hey, can we just? we copy your homework yeah but just change it a little bit because some of those caves and lighting is just like i you blink and change the ui and you're just in elden ring yeah um, well I, I was gonna say it was literally like copy your homework oh no we'll just make it darker that way you can't see that we stole it <laughs> um yeah like how far are you uh in the in the game um uh i i have i don't know if this would help you at all i've met the romanceable characters okay yeah yeah okay yeah okay um, that was pretty recent nice. i um you know i i want to go back to the game but i'm gonna give it some time until like there's some sort of big update or they add uh dlc or something but yeah, yeah. that game's fantastic I, I gotta i gotta get back in there and, and you know beat it pretty soon so when, when that comes out i can do another playthrough with a different kind of character or something like that 
Um, the other thing I'm playing is Duelists of Eden. Uh, if that name sounds vaguely familiar, it's because One Step from Eden is a game that also might sound vaguely familiar. <laughs> um, we did a stream of this uh, because um, Zach and I both adore the first game. It's by a guy named Thomas Moon Kang. He's a solo dev. Um, he basically said, man, I really liked Mega Man Battle Network. And then Capcom stopped making Mega Man games just in general, but specifically those. What if I just made that? And then he <laughs> did that, and it's awesome. Um, what does that mean is a roguelike Mega Man Battle Network style uh, chip battler slash, I guess, kind of a deck builder where you fight on this little grid and you, it's very fast and very intense. And then Duelist of Eden is the hot, hot sequel to that. That's that, but also a fighting game. And it's all PvP and it's handsome. Wow. Um, and it's very quick uh, and... It's just it's just satisfying. And I like I just desperately want this man to be given all the money so he can keep making these games because he's the only motherfucker doing it. I the soundtracks um, incredible for both of them. I think when did we didn't you made me play a ba battle mega mega man battle network? I think um, for scan lines. You played Mega Man Zero. I don't if, if someone made you play battle network. It wasn't me. Probably and Zach, because I, Zach uh, also maybe it was Network. zero. Maybe I asked about Battle Network because you because you guys had me play the one the pl PlayStation one one Legends Legends and that yeah. But I've always I, I thought think, about... I think we we wanted you to play Battle Network, but we we're all like the game. It's like you have to spend like an hour like play, it's a JRPG. Also, yeah, I think that's awesome. like, yes, like an hour and like we don't have time for that. And fucking you know, sub pixel stream which tops out at fifty eight minutes before Ian starts <laughs> gnawing in his enclosure. Listen. We short and concise content. Yeah. Um, now we're going to get to Jake's games here. However, I don't want Jake to read either of his bullet points. I want Jake to just read the third bullet point as a standalone sentence, please. They actually introduced some good races. <laughs> oh, to planet Earth. Thank you. <laughs> this is a game about America. <laughs> New race just dropped. <laughs> They just patched in a new race. <laughs> no, no. That's about Lego 2K Drive. Everybody's Boo. favorite Lego racing game. The one I just uninstalled. <laughs> no, it took... It took uh, a I'm game I interested forgot to hear why. Out. It uh, took them four uh, updates to add new single-player races. Um, one of which is just a rehashed multiplayer map that they added uh try point to point gates to perfect um but they did finally actually like almost everything else in the game it was like racing through like curated section of the open world because it's a big open world forza like nonsense but they added like real like i would not go so far as to say mario kart esque but like real like designed tracks um that have an interesting gimmick that they're all in space so the gravity is lower, so you can ah. do like interesting like hops and boosts to shortcut your way over like big gaps. Um, and I will be talking more about that in a later video. But it was like shockingly refreshing. I was like, okay, I I want to play through this whole new section so that my review of the game can be as holistic as possible. And I was pleasantly surprised that I was like, oh, I'm having a lot more fun with this now that it's not a gross open world forza like and it's actually like a fun racing game um but william i'm interested to know what you played if at all before I you mean, decided to uninstall it listen i installed it i i booted it up got into the game and of course right away main menu music they changed it since lego racers and i'm kind of upset but you know that i won't hold that against them um, I'll hold that against God. Mm. But uh, I, I got into the game and I played about maybe <laughs> 20 or 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, it was too f much Forza and the like crashing through everything constantly. Uh, it just felt I don't want to call it a child childish game. Because oh, it a hundred percent. I mean, it's a Lego game. Yes. None I'm of like, us are the target demographic. A, a thousand percent. So it, I can't. I can't say that, but I feel like I've played games aimed at children that haven't been this childish. 
so it just and, and and it just feels over the top but i can't complain about that because at the end of the day it is a game for children and it's a game sure. for children now not yeah for game for children when i was a child it's so yeah. i can't hold that against chatty for yes, my taste. it is so chatty i was skipping there everything are NPCs talking all the time and if i wanted a game to just do things off a checklist this game would be great but it just felt a little too fast paced for me um drive over to this thing park then the race starts the racing didn't feel great it felt like i don't know something with the drifting and the handbrake sort of stuff it felt like guys were always passing me even though i was and then it was designed for to have me like win right at the very end because it would be like always would be three laps i'd be in second place and the beginning of the or is it four laps did they do four laps or is it three laps? every track has a different number some of them have oh, okay. like seven so it would always be like the beginning of the last lap that i would be able to pass uh the guy and it just felt a little off um i also this is a me problem i was not into the car transforms to off-road vehicle transforms into boat all the time and i was like i kind of want to just race this cool sports car on the ground too and like crash into the water um and then maybe i hit a button to transfer form to the better thing but again tying there that all the way back to children hidden setting in the options to because originally when they were designing it it was manual and then it, mm. they in in play testing people were like it's a little too much to handle so they added it as like an expert setting in the options oh, for you to manually okay. change it yourself i could see that at the end of the day it's not a game that i want to throw commitment at for now um i would rather if i was going to spend time with a racing game i would rather spend time with like a proven racing game only because i don't play a lot of racing games mm -hmm. um like i've been meaning to someone i keep i kept getting instagram reels or might have been uh youtube shorts that talking about gran turismo 4 and how it was the last uh racing game to do like a great campaign like single player mm -hmm. campaign so i've always wanted i keep wanting to play that uh and i keep thinking back to that every time i see another racing game and i'm like oh but what if i just went and played an old game instead um but overall Need for speed urban oh, it's pretty good yeah. on the gamecube I should. Oh, oh, I could put that on my SD card GameCube. Um, yeah, I got to see where Gran Turismo 4 is. But at the end of the day, uh, I did think it was it, it felt good and it, it, it just wasn't for me. But I'm happy that in 20 years, uh, there can be other people who have a podcast talking about oh, when are they going to remake Lego 2K Drive? <laughs> it's the perfect That'll be when the next Lego racing game comes out. In exactly. And it'll be a remake of the original Lego racers and we'll be in our 70s. I don't well, know. So Matt, this but... is uh, going to be part of the the video because I do think I agree with you. It's weird because the 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 obvious focus on a younger demographic has like a weird tension with all like the season pass micro micro transaction stuff mm -hmm. um because i definitely feel like if like you know if i were a parent and i bought this for my 10 year old i'm not gonna shell out the 40 extra dollars on top of the 60 dollar price tag mm -hmm. for the bonus stuff that's like mostly online and mostly cosmetic um but I discovered a great video while I was in the process of writing this script from, I believe the channel is called Tin Sensei on uh, the title of the video is something like Lego racers can't be made today. Essentially oh, the thesis yeah, yeah, being that. that Lego racers is first and foremost, a single player racing game. Yeah, mm. It's not multiplayer. It's like, it's almost designed in such a way as to, promote speed running rather than being like a like a formal racing game it's like, like diddy kong racing which we're never getting another one of yeah the, he actually mentions diddy kong racing <laughs> in the video as a point of comparison banger game um but um Did he and just then this being diddy kong <laughs> Hey, he, hey, he did try to run, just like Diddy would have done. Um, but um, yeah, I have lots of thoughts about 2K Drive. The script is currently sitting hey. at Hold on, let me check. Ten words. <laughs> no, I want to say it's like... This game's bad, very bad, bad. It's, it's the SpongeBob V. 
<laughs> it's uh <laughs> Oh, we're uh, we're a mere fifteen words shy of six thousand at this damn. juncture. How does it how uh, does it feel that that script has more words than players of that game? <laughs> oh, it's not good. I've I've gone through like so many iterations of it, and this one is is like starts off with me just being like, "We're just gonna. T- this is not like a review of the game. We're just gonna kind of talk about it for a while." <laughs> I get into a whole, I have a whole uh, extended aside about the art direction uh, because of a tweet from like a year, a year and a half ago of some jabroni being like, yeah, FromSoft's engine's really holding them back. Look at how bad Armored Core 6 looks. (laughs) What? Um, so there's like a whole section about Wait, that. Known, hit, known hideous game, Armored Core. Yeah, sex. known, known Wait. hideous, gross game. <laughs> you like, sorry, you went completely silent on my side when you talked. I, oh. you, oh, can you repeat that? Because you, it was almost as if you timed it perfectly. What was just, the last thing I said? Like from Softwares games, and then you stopped. Oh, it was some guy talking about how uh, FromSoft's engine was holding them back. Because he thought Armored Core Six looked terrible. Oh, I'm like that's yeah. not right. And so making a point of comparison between like the Switch and the Xbox versions, because I know I talked about very like right when the game came out, the Switch version makes some pretty big technical concessions. Oh yes. to get that game onto the Switch, including limiting races to six racers instead of eight on the other consoles and PC. Oh. Um. But um, yeah, I'm not going to spoil all of it. I also played Dredge. That game's still pretty fun. It's getting I, a uh, Netflix app or movie app, whatever the fuck. It's something. Yes, I had heard about that. I um, I don't. When's the I... Markiplier Iron Lung movie come out? When's that Sifu show coming out? Oh yeah. Is he going to get an Iron Lung? No, it's you. Have you played Iron Lung? No. It's a Submariner game. Oh, I love a good Submariner game. But it's on like an alien ocean mm-hmm. of blood. Okay, never mind. Um, I was going to say, there's part of me, my dad used to dredge. He was a dredger, dredging and build docks uh, in Sundry. And uh, I thought it'd be really funny to do dredge with an actual dredger. Um even though in dredge you're not really I was gonna dredging say in, anything in the proper I, sense. I was gonna say I, I don't think you dredge at all in dredge. No, but, they, they, uh, they just found a cool boat word. We're yeah. not we're not making the bay deeper so that other <laughs> boats can enter it. Yeah, I make my never mind. Um, that's great though. I'm uh I I I want to play dredge and I, I like talking about the Lego games. I'm sad it's not. A perfect answer but um the next one i don't know if we've talked about it the the supposed leak is that the next 2k1 is going to be a soccer game lego 2k it's not gonna be lego 3k drive no it's like it's gonna be they somehow came up with an even stupider title it's lego 2k goal with like four o's (laughs) that it sucks because Lego two K drive i kind of like it like it's shit that i kind of think it's awesome (laughs) yes (laughs) <laughs> Lego 2K Drive should be a golf game. Um, I was, if I can make another brief aside, I was reading an interview about the design of the game where they were like, oh yeah, the reason we didn't call it Lego Racers and we called it Lego 2K Drive is because it's much more a driving game than a racing game. I'm talking about like it's the open world and the traversal. I'm like, okay, sure. I get it. Fine, whatever. Make Lego Racers 3, please. Yes, please. Did y'all talk about the terrible name of uh, Riot's fighting game on the show at all? What is uh, it? Yeah, what is it? 2XKO. Oh, that's two bad. 2XKO? 2? The number oh. the number 2. 2? Two? XKO. Well, oh I also gosh. feel like the so content bad. warning devs really backed themselves yeah. into an SEO corner. Yeah. Because um, I went to go look for like um, uh, images of it for when we were making the stream like schedule image and i just did content warning at first i'm like oh yeah that's not gonna work so i'd have to do like content warning game yeah yeah I, i've um, always thought if i uh, if i ever founded a wrestling company it would be nsfw i know the fw would be federation wrestling but i have no idea what the nns, NNS would be no sir Feder- no federation sir <laughs> um i karen and i went to uh, her sister's apartment and she was like oh 
I saw you streamed yesterday, but I saw the name popped up with just a content warning, and I thought you were warning people about something, so I didn't tune in. And I was like, oh, that's pretty great. Um, yeah, 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 they did themselves sense. on that one. It's a, it's a terrible name. I think I called the, the VOD of it uh, CW uh, colon content warning, and then just content warning. The CW? Warning. <laughs> the C yeah, I, ca I called up the CW. I said, listen here, content warning. Uh, Bring back gonna air. Uh, whatever the fuck that show that's the Archie comics is called. Uh, Archie. Riverdale. Riverdale. Bring back well, Supernatural. Supposedly, supposedly the CW picked up the Babylon Five reboot, which frightens fuck me. Fuck yeah, immensely. that's gonna be <laughs> terrible. Damn. Supposedly, I need to get... this was though this was before the writers' strike and before I think some mergers and sales. So who knows what's gonna happen there. But, I need to uh, finish. That's like when uh, MTV announced that they were doing a sort of Shinara series. I went, oh, what, yeah. what are you doing? That happened? It did for it two did. seasons, and it was what? heinous. What year was that? Because I remember my friend being excited for it. It was, oh no, because we watched the pilot when we were shooting um, what was supposed to be my first feature. So that would have been... I think 2015. Okay, that lines um, up then. We got the crew together to watch the pilot, or to what? Yeah, it was it was bad. It yeah, was I remember rough. not not being very good. Um, that made me think of uh, shit. I lost it. Never mind. Didn't make me think of anything because I can't remember. Uh, anyways, uh, CW, go check out their fine products. Uh, and tune in and have a good time. Uh, time for the news here, folks. Lots of news this week. Uh, lots of things for us to really grab our teeth into. Uh, it's not in any order other than the order Ian and I put it here in. Uh, so we can just start uh, at... I have no, uh, nothing about this first one, so I'm going to skip it. Good, uh, great. Uh, possibility Space was shut down this week. I don't know if people saw the CEO posted one of those notes uh, app things yeah, where he blamed, crazy. Uh, blamed the closure on uh, a uh, Kotaku reporter who came to him with a bunch of leak stuff and they were like, oh, we got to shut this whole thing down. Um, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Jim yeah. Stain, or whatever the fuck his name is. This, it's like, it's like when there was that big Sony hack, it would have been like if Sony was like, yeah, we're just not going to, we're just shutting down. We're not going to make movies. We're not going to make hardware. None of it. It's <laughs> yeah, gone. And it, and it wasn't huh, like... You could have gotten rid of Sony that easily? Mm -hmm. I, I understand being upset that like if someone came up You're to me and was getting Madam Web. Yeah. <laughs> if someone came into no local chat this. and was like saying all the like ideas we have in Subpixel Discord or something, yeah, that would suck. But I think using that to blame a studio you were already going to shut it, shut down is just like yeah. wild. Um I I remember the number of fucking people when Possibility Space opened up that was like, they're going to make the next WoW. They're going to save the MMO genre. <laughs> How'd that yeah. work out, assholes? Uh, but just yeah, big, uh, big taking your ball home because uh, the other team's beating you energy. Oh, I thought I figured they were out of money. Yeah, I mean, it was probably going to happen anyways, and it was a convenient thing to blame it on. Yeah. Someone else. Um, which Not sucks. That Everyone dunked on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, anyone who lost their jobs uh, can find new ones and a better place to work. Uh, I think Austin Walker. Yes. Was there, amongst Austin. others. Um, so, hopefully, they find success elsewhere. Uh, moving on here. Uh, Baldur's Gate Three uh, is the first game to win every major Goaty Award, folks. Have you played Including Baldur's Gate Three? It also well, they were including us in the list, right? Yeah, because it won every single one. <laughs> yeah, ever one save they us. No one else. Uh, but yeah, I got five major awards, uh, and I just think that's cool that that RPG is doing so well. Uh, we talked about a few weeks ago how uh, Larian's moving on from uh, Dungeons Dragons and Baldur's Gate uh, because and, Wizard uh, of the Coast is taking their ball and going home. <laughs> yes, um, I'm excited for anything they do. I um, honestly, part oh, of yeah. me. I hope they don't do another Divinity game. I hope they do, like, my heart says sci-fi or something. 
because that's always the leap. You go to a bunch of fantasy and then you do sci-fi, but I don't think it has to be sci-fi. It could be anything. I uh, will. Hear me out. Root the RPG <sighs> by Larian. Fuck. Root the I RPG. come. I come. Galactic Empires. Oh, Ooh. man. Can you imagine? I should bring can some... you buy the rights and give it to them? I don't... I, you know, someone left a big, long-winded comment on one of our videos about they know who owns it or something and i don't simply don't believe them but um i, I need to one it. of our videos it's I, the video it's about the galactic video Empires. yeah sorry uh we're famous I, what do you mean we have 17 videos about galactic empires this, whole, is oh, this is a galactic here. empires channel i still need to do a video on uh on Carl Schulte's uh, <laughs> roller coaster oh, amusement tycoon parks. amusement what parks. About... <laughs> oh, they're so good. You said that. You said that like like he's David Jaffe. Like he made his own roller coaster tycoon. He kept telling me he had a roller coaster company and they were working on parks. And it turns out all those parks are in and not in roller coaster tycoon three or something. And in the metaverse. Just, and he just had videos of them on YouTube. It's insane. Um, so weird. Yeah. What about that Christian one? That Christian card game you made me play or not play? Oh, uh, Redemption. Yeah, I need to. Yeah. I need to. Look. I have a bunch of card games. I need to listen. That when you brought those to Extra Life, that unlocked like a core memory in the back of my head because I definitely had those <laughs> when I was growing up. Did you grow up religious? Un unironically, like, very religious. Huh? Did you grow up like very religious? How the fuck are you getting your hands on Christian card games? Uh, yes, that is you are you are correct, yes. sir. All right, I also did. Um. I just and played we've... Magic the Gathering with a Satanist. <laughs> well, I you also had Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon, but I think it yeah, was like same. my parents being like, let's offer a th another alternative, just in case. <laughs> yeah, I think it was because my parents weren't stupid and like thought the same, that stuff the same was like little invoking Jake's the devil. Soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jake, no! Not the, not the Lego racers. It's the devil. Blue white dragon <laughs> not converting the... me to Islam. God, you ever get... I always... I used... <laughs> White Dragon converts Jake to Islam. <laughs> Has to be the title of this fucking episode of YouTube where I'm gonna punch oh, you in the ass. I need to write that. Uh, uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon converts <laughs> Jake to Jake Islam. To Islam. <laughs> and then I read Dune Fuck. and it was all over. <laughs> uh, God, I'm pissed the, uh, the Dune 2 wasn't brave enough to call it a jihad. Come on. You can't just say holy war. You gotta, you gotta what reference the source. The crusades. <laughs> if you're, yeah. if you're riding a blue eyes white dragon instead of a big worm, it's a Jake Hod. Mm. <laughs> Jake Hod. <laughs> um, T-shirt idea. We... <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Um, <laughs> so pixel shut down. Close. <laughs> me riding a sandworm, <laughs> and the text below it. And it's in a Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> font. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure, we can do that. Um, <laughs> next up here, uh, Ubisoft is revoking people's, uh, um, the crew from their libraries, uh, because they're shutting down a server. Uh, these people paid for the game and they owned it <clears throat> and Ubisoft did announce that they were going to shut the servers down, but I don't think people understood, uh, they were going to be revoking the ability to play the games when they shut the servers down. Was it, was so it weird. the Ubisoft guy or was it someone else who was like, you gotta be comfortable not owning the games that you buy? Um. Uh, ah, fuck. Which was that? Blizzard putting their foot in their mouth? No, no. Blizzard's the thing about, thing about tipping game devs. Um. Maybe it was Ubisoft. Somebody said that recently. Some idiot. Yeah. Uh, I thought. I thought it was that. Um. It's not the Google Stadia guy who said that, right? He's an idiot. I thought it was like one of the big game publishers. I he burned down years ago. I forget who it was. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking about, Jake. Ian I would know the, probably. The quote. He's the type of guy that it was that. Ian. Yeah, it was Ian. Um, I will say they do bring up at the end here about uh, the Stop Killing Games initiative by YouTuber Ross Scott uh, of Freedom's Mind, uh, Freeman's Mind fame. Uh, oh. Shout out to him. I actually did years ago. I did pixel art for one of his videos, um, but uh, he has been on this train for years. I remember some of his earlier videos about uh, how you need to preserve these games that are getting shut down. Like mm -hmm. at least like re like set up responsibilities for a company if they're going to like kill a game like that like give out the multiplayer source code give out the server source code so people can run servers give people and their can... fucking money back yeah so um, it's very interesting or a share of the company at the very uh, least yeah oh yeah give me stock when you yeah, shut down stock. skull and bones give me stock 
God, Skull and Bones, the quadruple A game, first quadruple A game. Coming, uh, closing soon. Hey, we, hey guys, after podcast, we boning tonight, right? Yeah, we're gonna hop the in and bone. Boys. I'm excited. I got my new sails, uh, and they just increased added my stamina for your ship. Yeah, I got increased stamina for my ship. It cost you 120 um, real human dollars. I just bought more crew members, who I pay. <laughs> You paid. You certainly paid. <laughs> paid you certainly paid for, for that. Speaking thinking... of uh, <laughs> paying for shit you shouldn't pay for, I want to talk about Star Wars Outlaws so badly. Um, what's that? Never heard of it. You want to talk about it? Yeah. So I I saw this tweeted out earlier in the week, and my immediate response was to post it in the same Discord and just say, "There's the Ubisoft we know and love." <laughs> Star Wars Outlaws, a game that costs $70 and comes out this year, has the Jabba the Hutt missions locked behind a, a, a season pass that you have to pay for on launch day. The, the things that they used in the very first promotional fucking trailer for this thing is not in the base video game. You have to pay John Ubisoft extra money. Fuck's I, sake. I wonder how far away we are from like Paramount or or Amazon or somebody being like, hey, new season of television. It's got eight episodes, but there's a ninth if you give us like an extra five dollars. <laughs> Finishes the story. <laughs> yeah. The real see the true ending. Wasn't it? You Disney need, just announced you, they want to put they want to add channels to the, to yeah, the app. Yeah, channels, Everyone's yeah, like, what are we doing? Cables. It's cable TV. Uh, it's, this it's, is it's wild. It's in it's fu it's it's like borderline false advertising because like they showed Jabba in the first trailer as like a, th a thing you can do, which people were like, oh my god, fucking the the huts and Tatooine again, Jesus goddamn Christ! But now this is just like come the on fuck on. <laughs> no, you don't. Unless you're gonna pay. Uh, sorry, Jake. If you want to play this day one, did you read this article? How much does it cost? I mean, I'm gonna guess just. You know, conservatively, like an extra 30 bucks. Correct answer. A hundred and five dollars. Wait, I'm sorry. On top, I was saying on top of the base game. That's that's the total. The total is 105. Base game okay, is 70. That was five dollars off. 105 for the DLC missions. And then if you want the, the physical version, it's like 150 or some bullshit. Man, but don't worry, you get make... you get to pay you get to play it three days early, mm. <laughs> and and you get an outfit for main character who, where you dress like Han Solo. I um, I just realized I don't get to expense any of these stupid games for work anymore, <laughs> so that means I have to spend my actual hard-earned money on bullshit, and I don't know if I want to do well, that. Well, unless we start deducting out. personal expenses for Subpixel, you know, we made some hot cash off of red bubble this week so yeah. maybe, it's, maybe it's time we've bought we bought our Harvard's one March. copy <laughs> of, just, uh, just, just just expense it to ian's credit card yeah i he did steal know. that he, one it's a communal credit card he can't read <laughs> he can't he's he's illiterate um yeah this sucks i i was literally gonna say this when jake brought up um the microtransactions and stuff in Lego 2K Drive. Microtransactions. Microtransactions. But my thought is, because um, I was going to make this awesome comparison, which is I am buying the Lego 2K Drive uh, Lego set. Everything that comes in the set, I should be able to play with and use. Correct. And that's how video games should work. Everything that comes I paid in the video for the game, toy. Let me play with it. For fuck's sake. There yeah. is so much locked out of the garage unless you pay for it. <laughs> it <sighs> that's truly the most heinous thing. I, is that there just... are chassis and bricks locked behind a paywall. Ugh. It's gross. You it's really gross. finally did the thing Tim Curry feared most. Space. The corrupted space with capitalism. <laughs> bastards and this game actually looks good is the other annoying I know. thing even though all the new names sounds like justin roiland improv uh like slero and something else i can't remember what it was you, you, there is you, you, an art you, for coming up with a good star wars character name yeah you guys, you guys know about, about uh, glup shido right like the, the term yes. glup shido yes um there's My favorite there, there's a there's like an ai uh voice thing that they they took the trailer and just renamed every character to glup shido Wait, what's Glup Shido? 
Hey, you don't Shido. know about this, William? Am Bob I today's Shido lucky 10,000? Is... Yes. <laughs> it's it's a stand-in yeah, yeah. like for any ridiculously named Star Wars character. This is like <laughs> the stand-in of like, oh, it's, yeah. Okay, okay. And, and like it's that. like the thing of like, there's always someone on Twitter who's like, oh yeah, well, when this random glup shitto from Legend shows up, the whole show's gonna change because mm -hmm. I read this, I read the novel fucking 13 years ago and I won't shut up about it on Twitter. So when glup shitto shows up and he's the one that saves Kylo Ren's fucking left ball sack from the Knights of Ren, <laughs> that's when this is really gonna take off. And he lines up the Sith knife with the Death Star. Which is held up by Palpatine's fucking uh, man. I can't. I'm left still fucking asshole. Did, did either of you uh, um, watch the Red Letter Media Andor review? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, Andor review. No, no, no. Uh, oh, so first of all, it was fantastic, um, and I was val my opinion was validated by Red Letter Media for Andor, um, and I told Karen to watch it, even though she doesn't really watch them, uh, and I don't watch them super often. But uh, Wait, what's your, are you pro or anti Andor? Uh, pro Andor. Oh, okay, okay. Phew, 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 yeah, phew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just when people who you respect you agree up. with you. Um but he he did a whole bit on uh on a character's name and not knowing if it was the actor's name or the character's name because they like reversed the last name and first name. Um, oh my god. Which was extremely funny. Um I highly recommend their Andor review. It was, it was fun to go through. And he noticed a shot thing that I noticed in the in the in the show, which is the prison scene, uh or or torture scene. Um and I felt very validated, folks. The tilt. Um I, the tilt. I, I was Yeah. I was watching Jenny Nicholson's uh, Rise of Skywalker review, and she got to the part with the stupid space knife, and then she reads the thing that I read online that's like, yeah, Palpatine was holding up the Death Star perfectly, so that, like, and she just goes, <laughs> I thought of you, because like, that's something Will would do. The, I, uh, the highest praise I've ever gotten for any of my writing was a former student of mine emailing me to be like, I read your rise of skywalker screenplay and i'm just gonna consider this the canon version in my own mind <laughs> it's pretty good uh, thank you fixing the only it. thing that can the only thing that can save us from fucking ray scott race ray star wars um oh sorry i forgot literally i brought that whole red light video up because i want to say he didn't realize the somehow palpatine returned was from star wars <laughs> like he thought it was a meme on something else <laughs> and that they made Oscar Isaac say it, but they were—he was like, "No, that's in the movie." He says somehow Palpatine returns. He also um, says they fly now. They fly now. <laughs> and they, they ride horse. I love. I can't remember if it was like GQ or somebody's interview where they talk about that scene, or maybe it was like the like the Wired autocomplete interview, and uh, somebody brought up that line, and John Boyega was like, "Yeah, but they've been doing that since the Clone Wars." <laughs> So, well, but obviously he didn't have enough sway over the right the there's, there, there, the there's an interview with oscar Isaac talking about that and he was like i don't know i would show up to set some days and they would hand me a script and i would literally just roll my eyes at it and i was like yes <laughs> unprofessional but i don't care fuck them <laughs> oh, it's, it's a tragedy thank god for andor um and hopefully star wars outlaws is good i'm looking forward to it i mean there's a world where it's the game of the year. It's not this one, but uh, there is no. a world. <laughs> hey, where, if it's free on Games Pass, I'll play it. I feel like it'll be the same. You know, if if you told me at the end of the year, like Hogwarts Legacy, it was the most selling game of 2024. I, I would believe that. I saw that. people online that were saying like, oh, well, don't worry. It'll underperform and be $30 in a month because it's a Ubisoft game. And I was like, are you fucking stupid? Look at the first two words of the thing. Yeah, it's Star Wars. Pa pa parents have already, grandparents have already bought this for kids. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. So I don't know. I think it'll be great. I'm excited for it. And I won't be able to play this, that Job of the Hut mission, but um, I'll watch someone on the internet play it. Is yep. the robot romanceable? I hope so. Well, if he's not, I mean, you always go play uh, Fallout New Vegas. They made the battle Fisto? droids hot. Well, the fucking Fisto. Fisto. He's not an automaton, though, because I'd have to kill him if he was an automaton. Not a filthy synth? Um, I don't know anything about Sonic, but Keanu Reeves is voicing Shadow. Um, was that like official or was that? That's, a, that's, that's official. That's official. Um, 
It's also very funny, but that's about it. It's funny and that's about it. He'll do fine. Is Shadow the one that gets pregnant? They all they all get pregnant at Sonic. Well, so they have two cyberpunk alums in uh, in the Sonic franchise now. Yes, you're right. Now they just have to put Jim Carrey in cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> I would fucking love that. <laughs> Some sort of mob boss. Yeah, and I was trying to I, no, think of what that. he would play. I, 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 want, I want to fight a big mecked up Jim Carrey who's like doing shtick the entire time. He um, he's, he's, he's referencing his movies and shooting me with guns. That's what I want. He's the new Adam Smasher. Yes. I was gonna say he, sh Jim Carrey, should have been the uh, the AI car. Oh, no, Delamain. Uh, yeah, Delamain. Yeah. He would have been good as Delamain. That would have been good. I actually, now I really want them to do that. I want them to add a, an actor in for the next big deal for Super Cyberpunk. But they're not like Idris Elba playing a guy. They're just that person in 2077. <laughs> and they're all mecked out and like Richard Nixon. So it's got to be Jim Carrey or Ben Schwartz. Yes. <laughs> or it could be um, uh, Handsome McHandsome. His... James uh, Marsden. James Marsden. God. He's probably already in Cyberpunk for all we know. Yeah. He's in everything. Um, take two in the news today for several different things. Uh, one of them being a rumor that they're preparing for a Mafia series announcement. Uh, like a remaster or Mafia 4? That is what I'm... Probably, uh, probably a reboot. But I... <laughs> man, I don't know why I keep coughing. The I was going to ask, is it... Does Take Two own Mafia, like the Mafia games? I don't uh, know. Uh, I, I think so. Yeah, reading here, I think they do. Um, because oh, the next iteration of the Mafia franchise. Okay, that's why I didn't get to read this. I was reading them before the stream, and this one I didn't get to read. So I wasn't sure if they were saying Take Two is preparing for a like a Mafia series about mafias, or if they are rebooting the Mafia series. Of games that already exist. Oh, so like it seems if like making the games. Take Two's The Godfather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Take yeah, I, yeah, Mario yeah. Puzo's The Godfather. I was like, I can't tell which one you're saying. So yeah, it, it would be, um, it would be uh, after Mafia Three, and then Kotaku apparently reported in May 2022 that the prequel, uh, that this game will be a prequel set in Sicily, uh, and it'll be set years before mm -hmm. the first Mafia mm -hmm. games. Um, I think they're just gonna call it Mafia, and so just, it like, could be Take Two's Mario series. Puzo's Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather. Could be. Uh, I I've the never how the game is Godfather Takeover. The I've never Godfather played Takeover. A, a Mafia game, so I know in one of them you collect Playboys or pinups or something like that. Um, That'd be all of them. Uh, yeah, it might be all of them actually. And, yeah, and it, th three, three is the least. Like, at no point do I think the main character is actually in the mafia. Um, but you get to shoot a lot of Ku Klux Klan, so that's pretty cool. Because three's in in New Orleans or New Orleans, yeah, or it's just like yeah, yeah pretty in New Orleans. It's just south, do you know though. what year three takes place? Uh, I want to say like the sixties. Is it the sixties? Okay, I wasn't sure. Um, and then the other thing uh, that uh, Take Two is in the news for. Uh, is they are uh, letting go 5% of their staff. Gross. Uh, which Ooh. is over 600 uh, employees, uh, which is gross and disgusting, and that stinks, and I'm going to sneeze. I apologize. That didn't happen. Uh, the company will also scrap several projects into development as part of a cost, cost, cost reduction plan, which is expected to result in total charges of up to $200 million. It declined to name the projects that have been canceled, uh, which is also annoying. Um, so, yeah. Uh, more people getting fired, uh, more people and get getting let go, uh, which is uh, awful and terrible. And oh, we just got to bring back the guillotine. Uh, we got to bring back the guillotine. Figured out years ago. Uh, uh, the CEO of the Take Two makes forty three million dollars a year. Yeah, Jesus. the French solved this problem, and for some it, reason we've never gone back to it. It it would be. Uh, uh, amazing if if at the end of a year you could look back and be like, hey, we earned X amount of money this year. Great job. Let's try to well, let's just earn the same amount next year. Like, well, here here's or, my solution. At the end of every fiscal year, the wealthiest person in the country gets shot, is summarily executed. <laughs> 
Yes. And like, and like, and like, they get to have like a nice big last day. Yeah. Like, they, but like they get a parade. Will incentivize you to give your money away. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And leading up to that, executed at the end of the year. Leading up to the day uh, that they choose the person, like bi- millionaires and billionaires are trying to donate as much money as possible to get below mm-hmm. the like threshold. Yeah. Um, oh god, that would be really great. That's We're like just a purge discovering Brewster, Brewster's billions, but it's awesome. <laughs> um. Yeah. Fuck all those uh, uh, upper management bastards. Um. Give me money, please. God. Pay me. <sighs> Pay me money. Um, folks, that's the news. Uh, so we're gonna move right along to the good old wish list spotlight. And this week's wish list spotlight is Vulture Scavengers of Death on Steam. This game is basically uh, Resident Evil, uh, but tactics game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very adorable. It looks very fun. It's got a great style which is sort of a blend of Resident Evil, isometric, uh, and sort of the Metal Gear 1 uh, weapons selecting on the sides. Um, it's more of a polygonal uh, Resident Evil, but uh, I'll read you the little thing here. People? You can marry multiple people. Uh, you can have threesomes and multiple positions, just like Cyberpunk. Keanu Reeves is actually also in this. Um, you face zombies and f- uh, fearsome gruesome in this turn-based survival horror roguelike as you seek the path to recover a valuable artifact, unravel the history of Salento Valley and its downfall after a bioterrorist attack led a secret cult involved with the powerful corporation Eugenesis Tech. Um, it just seems There's like someone's lot. like, I like Resident There's Evil. What's going on there? A lot of words there, yeah. I like Resident Evil, I like roguelikes, and I like tactical shooters. Uh, let me put Also, the rooms together. are like claustrophobically tiny. Yeah. Uh, like that but it really gives off it looks like i'm looking down on a resident evil map yeah 100 um, so i'll give them that it, it looks like fun uh so check it out that is once again vultures scavengers of death not the greatest title uh for no. a video game uh it makes me vultures scavengers of death makes me think post-apocalypse and it's a bikers gang those are the first mm. two things i think of um, so, uh, if you're reading this, Team Vultures, please change your game to that, uh, and, uh, stop making this. Thank you. No, go give that a wish list on Steam. It helps, uh, elevate these games, uh, so more people can see them in the algorithm. Uh, and that's gonna be it for the show, folks. Uh, Chris Jake, any final words before you're summarily executed? Oh my goodness, am I the wealthiest person in the country? Uh, uh, please, what please have place I been the doing? provided pill in your mouth. <laughs> I need three big gays. That's my bare minimum. What? I need three is big it, gays. That's my bare minimum. The word bear. Correct. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. I'm tracking Folks. with you. <laughs> Don't track with Chris, track with me. Subpixelfilms.com is where you can find all of our wonderful content. Uh, if you like me, you can find me at Hunty70. If you like Jake, you can find him at underscore Jake Terrio. If you like Chris, you can jump off a bridge. Uh, you, know, you can find him at Save Data Chris on Twitter. Um, he's from Save Data. I recently did a presentation on their stream and it was great. Sure. Um, the 10 year olds loved it. So go check that out. I think that'll be on their YouTube channel at some point. Uh, and then uh, we've got stuff this week. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern is Fired Emblem, episode like 80, 80,000. Uh, Jason and Kyle will be there. Kyle's in Florida again. So he'll uh, have j- dogs, the cute dogs, to so come back for those. Uh, and then uh, the weekend I'll be doing Splinter Cell. So we'll see y'all then. Bye.